The first question I want to ask you is just about, um, I know that you had a part in passing bipartisan bill with the um, the areas around Central High School, and I right. just wanted to talk to you a little bit about, about that, if you could share what that was like. And sure, so uh, we're blessed to have our National Historic Site at Central High. It's the only high school in America that's part of a national park. And in celebrating the 60th anniversary of integration of Central High from 1957, Senator Cotton and I introduced legislation to expand the boundary of the National Park to include the seven houses along South Park Street right in front of the school. The purpose, to preserve that streetscape as it was in 1957. So when people come on the Civil Rights Trail and look at the beauty of Central High, they also can get a feel for what that street looked like. 60 years ago. Right. Now, there have still been some allegations. I know there were some people protesting saying they felt that segregation still exists in Central High School. Do you see that it still is a problem occurring here in Little Rock? Well, I think we've come, you know, a long way, uh, gosh, in my lifetime. I'm 60, so in my lifetime I've seen the South and America come so far in equal rights for African Americans in this country, and it's so impressive. But that doesn't mean that we don't always find challenges for uh, equal treatment, even though we've come light years from that time. So uh, I think that we're always working to make sure that we protect uh, the rights and opportunities under our Constitution for all of our citizens, and I don't think that work's ever finished. Right. Um, I also want to talk to you, too, about um, some national-oriented um, things, especially health care. Um, I know you had a vote in March, and then now there's a lot kind of weighing about is repeal and replace really going to happen? I mean, right. where do you feel that we are in, as far as the current state of health care moving forward with, with changing or keeping the law? Right. Well, what's happened, we, one thing we know is correct is that the Affordable Care Act uh, has not worked for a lot of people in our country. Premiums are higher, deductibles are higher, and so people really can't use the insurance that they have. Secondly, we have some counties, about a third of counties, that only are down to one uh, provider of health insurance under the exchanges, and so there's limited uh, opportunity to even get insurance, particularly in some rural parts of the country. So what we're trying to do in Congress is find a way to improve by repealing that act and replacing it with something that works for families who want to keep kids on their plan, works for pre-existing conditions no matter uh, what that condition is across the country with affordable, accessible coverage, and gets competition into the market that can bring down those premiums and deductibles. And that work is not done, as you note. It's not uh, been successful to find that uh, spot where we can achieve that legislative change. But I think people in Congress, particularly in the Senate, are still hard at work on it. What do you think it's going to take to find something you know, that will work and that will be able to move forward? I mean, what's going to have to be different? Well, each time new people come into the conversation and, and adds to the strength. For example, from the time that the House uh, had a proposal that passed uh, in the spring to the time the Senate considered what's called Graham Cassidy in the last few weeks, our governor's engaged, and Governor Hutchison here in Arkansas was very involved in trying to improve the product to something that he felt as a governor would serve the people of Arkansas and that would be uh, something that was improved. So I think expanding the conversation, continuing those discussions, because one thing I know, the status quo is not uh, satisfactory. Do you think what we're doing in Arkansas really sets a model for how things could change at the national scale? Well, I think what gov the governor has done and what he's said to me is if he had more flexibility on coverage design, uh, work requirements, um, flexibility across the state, rural versus urban, in designing a program, uh, that that would make uh, the money go further in Arkansas, serve more people in a better way, and with more flexibility. And so one of the core tenets of what we want to change, whether it was in the House bill or in the Senate efforts, is to give our governors that flexibility. The Graham-Cassidy bill in the Senate was ultimate flexibility. It was really turning over uh, the health care marketplaces to our states and letting all 50 states uh, experiment as they do today under the existing Medicaid program, but with even more flexibility than you have under Medicaid. Mm -hmm. 
And kind of keeping with that, I mean, talking a little bit about tax reform, you know, President Trump has, you know, offered some solution that he feels is best. How do you <coughs> feel about that, and where do you see that conversation going as we continue in the future? Well, this week we started uh, that conversation with the Senate and with the Trump administration. For over a year, the House Republicans have worked on a proposal on how do we get faster economic growth, more jobs, and then create a simpler, fairer tax system for families and for business. And so at the heart of what President Trump uh, proposed this week was a 40% cut on both large company and entrepreneurial business taxation and collapsing and making simpler uh, the tax system for our families so that they have a simpler, fairer system, including creating a, a new bracket of zero where a lot of families who are paying tax today would not pay tax in the future. Uh, he's laid out that framework. Now comes the hard work in Congress to fill in every detail. Uh, I'm optimistic, though, because Democrats and Republicans recognize that we are not competitive in corporate taxation. So we want to improve that, and uh, President Trump has proposed moving the corporate rate from 35 percent to 20 percent, which would move us below the average of the industrialized world. And Americans spend about six billion hours a year complying with our tax system, which is 70,000 pages. So President Trump has said we want all families to uh, get a tax break and a benefit in simplification. And their goal is to have everybody fill out their taxes and pay it on a postcard. Actually, fill out your the 1040 on a postcard, which would be terrific if we can pull that off. So simplification, uh, and I'd love to have constituents uh, write in about it. They can go to uh, fairer and simpleandfairer.gop and read about this bill and participate in it. I know some people were concerned because they were worried that um, what he had proposed might be too much, uh, too much of a break for corporations, yep. or you know that it would benefit Trump, you know Trump and his family and his you know businesses as well. I mean, do you right. think that that's a, a major concern here? I think the real uh, obligation that uh, members of Congress and senators here from constituents all over the country is to benefit 320 million Americans trying to get faster economic growth. So we've right-sized some regulatory burden, and now if we want to create jobs, I think a, a massive full reform of the tax system would really spur economic growth and that helps all of our families with job opportunities and, and uh, uh, more ability to start a business or expand a business and it will recruit businesses home from abroad. By changing that corporate rate and going what's called territorial, so you only pay income taxes once as a corporation, uh, here and not, a, uh, I mean abroad and, and here, uh, cleaning that up we'll have companies come back to the United States, and I think that's a major goal of it, too. And I think that's a bipartisan goal. Mm -hmm. um, and also, President Trump is either now in or soon will be in Puerto Rico after you know the devastation from Hurricane Maria. Do you feel that we've done enough to um, provide support and relief to Puerto Rico? I gave a, a talk on the floor this week in the House uh, calling for a joint task force approach in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico does not have the resources of Florida and Texas. Puerto Rico doesn't have an interstate highway system connecting to the mainland. And because it's an island, because there was so much infrastructure destruction, I think the military is going to have to run the recovery program uh, in Puerto Rico. We have a lieutenant general down there now uh, who is assessing, I think they're holding a press conference as we're taping this. But we need a, a, a joint task force like General Honore used in Katrina to coordinate local FEMA and federal support uh, in there. I think that's the kind of situation that's uh, so tough in Puerto Rico, that's the way to handle it. Mm -hmm. um, I also wanted to ask you to, um, oh, yeah. not to get too controversial, but just about everything going on in the NFL. A lot of our viewers, have, um, we've been talking about it online, on social media, just right. the president's response and um, even just the, or, you know, how Arkansans feel about yeah. what's going on. I mean, where, where do you see yourself with it, this issue? Well, uh, for me, uh, when I hear the national anthem, I stand and uh, pay respect to our flag and to uh, the freedoms of our country. And it's a moment for all Americans to capture that spirit of unity in our country and remembrance of all the sacrifices for our country. So I believe in reverence to the flag and to our national anthem. I think there are other times and places where people should uh, protest uh, changes they'd like to see in our society or our government. 
uh, and then I encourage them to take uh, that opportunity, their First Amendment rights to do that at another time. And I also want to ask you too, um, now this comes from one of our other reporters here asking you if um, some of your colleagues in New York, New Jersey, and California were angry over the state tax exemption going mm -hmm. away. State tax exemption uh, is, uh, is an issue in the tax plan that will be dealt with in Congress. And I think there'll be some alternatives uh, to it. Right now, the was in the listening that we've done for the past two years on preparing for tax reform, people said we want to keep the charitable deduction and we want to keep the mortgage interest deduction across the country for families. And, uh, but we are willing to give up the deduction for state and local taxes. That affects Arkansans too, as we have state and local taxes. So it's not just a New York issue. So I think that'll get debated in Congress in the next few weeks and maybe some alternatives or some flexibility on it. Uh, but I would remind people that this uh, bill, for most people, increases this, the uh, deduction uh, exemption to $24,000 and that that state and local tax deduction only affects those who itemize their deductions for their tax returns. So that's um, actually a fairly small uh, group of filers around the, the country. So we increase the standard deduction for families uh, and I think you'll see Congress reflect on how could they do some flexibility on state and local taxation. Uh, but it is a big, big number. It's over a trillion dollars that, uh, that the federal government doesn't get through that deduction. I also just want to ask you too, I mean, as things feel more and more polarized in this political climate, um, how, what do you feel about the future of the Republican Party, not only in Arkansas, but also on a national scale? Well, uh, Republicans uh, are, have two-thirds of the state general assemblies across the country, a majority of the governors. Uh, they have a, a very modest uh, majority in the House and in the Senate, and they have the White House. And they stand for faster economic growth, uh, a, a America's leadership position in the world, a stronger national defense. And I think that's resonated with voters across the country. So uh, I think that uh, the obligation of elected uh, Republicans out there in our government is to deliver on uh, things that will produce faster economic growth, a stronger national security position for our country, uh, federalism, where we let uh, people solve problems closer to the citizens, which is a, a tenet of our, our party. So I'm very optimistic about our ability to do those things. I guess my final question for you is just how do you feel that the Trump administration has done thus far? Well, it's a mixed record. I mean, uh, uh, the President Trump's working hard in the judiciary appointments where he will appoint uh, about uh, 130 or so federal judges. That's well underway, including uh, the new justice on the Supreme Court. He campaigned on getting the economy growing faster by removing the wet blanket of too much regulation, not affecting safety and soundness or clean water, but where it's gone overboard on regulation, trying to pull that back to help job creation. And that's been a big part of what he's gotten done this year so far. I think that's reflected in optimism of CEOs and workers across the country. He called on uh, accountability at the Veterans Administration, and he's uh, signed into law two major changes in accountability for Veterans Affairs, and uh, that has been a big change. And then he called on rebuilding our military after uh, nearly eight years of really hurting our military's ability to perform, and those, uh, those bills have come through Congress as well. Uh, what does he need to do? What should he be working on? I think he should stay... Uh, focused on his issues around border security, be focused on tax reform to help the economy grow faster, and then help drive a conclusion on this very tough issue in our country, which is we must find a way to deliver affordable, effective, accessible health care across the country by uh, fixing the, uh, or repairing the failings of the Affordable Care Act. Anything else you'd like to add to that I didn't ask you today? I don't think so. You cover the waterfront. All right, good. Thank well, you thank very you much. So thank much. you for the invitation. Yeah.